Welcome everyone, this is Crowned with Glory Reborn and I want to talk to you guys today about why we care so much for people who seem to give so little or at least they're not giving what we want or need or is meaningful to us. So, um, you know, for those of you who like to get in and out and want it in a nutshell, I'm going to answer very quickly. Of course, I will have, you know, the subtopics timestamp below. This will be a two-part message, and in part one, we're going to talk about what the problem is. And in part two, which I'll put out tomorrow, uh, we will talk about the solution to the problem. But in a nutshell, to answer the question, why do I care so much about someone who gives so little? Well, the answer is that a lot of times what has happened in these relationships is that we've confused intensity with intimacy. And why does this happen? Because there's maybe um, trauma bonding that's gone on in this relationship. And again, maybe going back to our childhoods, uh, this is something that we were taught to normalize. And we cannot really recognize what healthy emotional bonding is. And I'll talk about that as you know, we get into this video. But this trauma bonding creates relationship addiction. And uh, we'll definitely get into discussing the symptoms and, you know, in part two of this series, we will look at solving the problem, which is getting into relationships where intimacy can be built instead of intensity. So recently I had some people talk to me, um, even in recent months, okay, come and talk to me personally about trying to let go of somebody who they felt they had a special connection with and if you're one of those people that is like I feel this connection to somebody but why is it that they won't give me what I want why is it that I can't get what I need out of this person or this relationship but I feel such a connection to them well you got to ask yourself what is this feeling based on a lot of times in intense relationships there's a feeling of euphoria when you're with this person they can have this hypnotic effect maybe even be very seductive and we can at times confuse these feelings with chemistry like oh my gosh and listen if that's you I'm not making light of this at all okay I have met people with <laughs> let me just say one particular person, never before, never since, walked into the room and immediately laid eyes on this person. Our eyes met and it was like, yes, this person, I see you, damn, we're in the zone here. <laughs> it's a vortex. <laughs> and it, it was kind of like, I even, after I met this person, I was like thinking to myself, what was that? <laughs> that was crazy, right? Okay, so I'm not making light of you, this. If you had that kind of experience, maybe there is something going on, okay? But just go a little deeper and, and try to really sort out what all is going on here? Don't, you know, simplify it down to, wow, we have chemistry or this is a soulmate or a twin flame because here's the thing. A lot of times people can over-spiritualize these strong emotions, okay, that are present in emotionally violent, tumultuous relationships, okay, and these emotions, these strong emotions are often present in dysfunctional, toxic, personality disorder people. They can be very emotionally intense people. And so it's not really a manifestation of some special spiritual connection. Not necessarily, okay? It can be a manifestation of their pathology. And a lot of times this can get confused for someone's capacity to love or show passion when in fact it is a sign that they're, they're dysfunctional, 
they are personality disordered and they're toxic so be very aware that you're seeing things clearly when you feel this special connection you feel this chemistry um, what exactly is it that you're picking up on because yeah it can be a quick feeling that comes over you uh, it just in a moment all right a, a rush or a high that you get when you're around these people and here's the trouble that is makes this so difficult Part of us wants to believe that there is special meaning to this feeling um, because we're a lot of us are addicted to intensity. Um, we would rather a lot of people would rather have intensity over in, intimacy in sex. And um, again, be careful with that because you got to ask yourself, really search yourself out. What are you basing this? idea upon that this is a soulmate twin flame connection or whatever uh whatever it is um we need to realize what real intimacy is okay we need to know the difference between intimacy and intensity and that's what i'm going to talk about now actual intimacy is something it's a dynamic between people where there's communication there is respect and in the communication, the respectful communication, the partner will relax you. They will comfort you and vice versa. There is a desire between both partners to know and be known. And so they also, you know, I've talked about this in my previous uh, videos, um, where when you're dealing with emotionally unavailable people, there's this dynamic of people hiding behind stuff. You never really know where they stand. They don't make their intentions very clear and known or they, what they say is not backed up by the actions. Well, in an intimate connection with somebody, they share their intentions openly. And because of all this good stuff that I mentioned, love can actually grow. You can't grow love if somebody's hiding their intentions or they're misleading you by falsely stating their intentions. And if they're not acknowledging your needs and validating your needs, how can love grow? And, and when I say acknowledging and validating your needs, I'm not necessarily saying that they agree with you, okay? As I mentioned in my last video about uh, having a healthy relationship and how do I get one okay there is fighting and arguing in healthy relationships it's just that they fight fair right in unhealthy relationships there's no fair fighting um, then there's no conflict resolution either um, everybody's blaming and nobody's accepting the blame but in a healthy relationship where there's actual intimacy the partner is going to acknowledge and validate they don't have to agree they might say you know I acknowledge how you feel and I understand and how can I make you feel better in this I'm um, not to be a crutch or not to excuse or anything like that uh, or enable but um, there is more of a trying to really get in that person's shoes and really meet their needs um, and I really it, to me it's loving okay it's loving behavior it takes me back to Teal Swan's definition of love that I really appreciate she says that taking another person's best interests as your own is real love what is your definition of real love what is the definition of love according to the people who you are have partnered with in the past or the way you were brought up as I mentioned in previous videos about I think it was in the video I put out about when they don't love you back I mentioned how some people love very innocently whereas other people love eternally people who love innocently they'll just put it out there oh I love you they're in the moment right <laughs> um, it's very innocent to them uh, other people love very eternally where you know uh, when they really finally say those words there's a lot of weight to back it up they they're going to um, love you no matter what happens okay and so what is your love nature what is the love nature of the people that you are partnering with um, 
and realize there's a lot, a lot of people out there that whether they're aware of it or not, for them, their attitude is, I'm going to love you as long as you're making me happy and I feel good about this partnership. The moment you're not making me happy and feel good, I'm out. <laughs> that is unfortunately the definition of love for a lot of people. And then what is happiness to them? To a lot of people, it means avoiding pain. The problem with this is that life mastery often avails itself through challenging, if not painful, life lessons. But maybe this person doesn't want to learn them. They don't want challenges, adversity. They want the easy button. They want things made easy and effortless for them. And the moment you start challenging them and saying, but what about this? And how about my needs? And well, I'm actually not happy with what is making you happy. Well, they're done. They're out, you know, because a lot of times people are in relationships for what they can get out of them rather than what they can give to them. And there is an inability to also separate the fact that, yes, love is a feeling, but it's also an action. And what does love and action look like? Yes, sometimes it involves sacrifice. No, you don't have to sacrifice your core and all that, but maybe, maybe there are some not so critical things that you can sacrifice for a relationship. Here's the sad part is that um, if you are an empath, um, and I would imagine you are because you're watching this, you care about personal healing, uh, self-awareness, spiritual growth. Um, if you are an empath or possibly a codependent, you have likely never experienced true intimacy, which would be deep, lasting, mutual and this is opposed to an intense but superficial, fleeting sexual experience that some of us have had that are typical among personality disordered partners. Real emotional intimacy is something that is going to grow over time. We're talking months, years, not hours, days, weeks. Hence another reason to slow your roll. And I talk about this in my book, Healing from Narcissistic Abuse, uh, where it's not just about narcissism, it's about emotionally unavailable people, okay? It's gonna take about six months for you to see if you are dealing with somebody who is wearing a mask, right? Faking shared values, faking emotions, faking compatibility. It usually takes within six months. And so yet this is another reason why um, you need to kind of go slow. Any kind of like really, you know, the chemistry. I'm not telling you to ignore that, okay? I mean, I have an appreciation for that. I'm not going to lie to you, okay? But that's part of my, <laughs> that's part of my personal healing, all right? My point is, is that um, you look beyond the chemistry, or what you feel is a twin flame union or soulmate or however you want to word it, uh, however you want to spiritualize the connection. Look beyond it. Let this thing flesh out over, you know, six months minimum because if, if somebody's faking it, they're faking compatibility, faking shared values, that's definitely going to fall off within six months. And second... Uh, it's going to give you the opportunity to really develop real intimacy. Whereas six months later, you know, if you were not able to get real intimacy with this person, well, that's going to tell you something about that connection now, isn't it? Real intimacy requires reciprocal empathy and mutual emotional attunement and the willingness to be vulnerable with one another. Intimacy is the ability to bear all, right? It's almost like becoming naked in your spirit, your emotion, naked with another person, where you are able to be heard, understood, and 
felt at a deeper level that you are not going to be able to share with just anybody, right? And this brings a feeling of closeness where you have no shame in being yourself because this person gets you and more importantly, they want to get you. They are want to understand you. A lot of times we deal with people who are not really listening to us or they're not trying to understand us, but in a relationship with somebody who has the desire to understand, they get you because they want to get you, then love can really grow, real intimacy can develop where you do feel safe to share your worst thoughts, your worst fears, and it's a bonding experience. Now, on the contrary, on the other end of this, you know, let's talk about the intensity of emotions, which I think a lot of us have familiarity with, unfortunately. Guilty, right? <laughs> we have to be aware of not confusing intensity of emotions with intimacy. Depth of emotions is something that you need to pay attention to. It's often indicative of character impaired individuals. Yet again, I'm saying this, I'm repeating this, so I really get you to understand the, the serious need to pay attention when you feel a deep connection with somebody. Really pay attention to what else is going on there, all right? Real depth of emotions is going to be consistent. If that's what this person is conveying, they might have depth of emotion, but they need to have a full range of emotions, not just fixating on one emotion, right? Where they're, they're really super happy or super depressed. It's almost bipolar type thing going on. They easily fall in love and they easily fall um, out of love, you know, like loving you one minute, hating you the next, calling you their soulmate today, and then, you know, finding a new one tomorrow, like what the heck is that? You know, the swinging pendulum, like <laughs> shutting it off and on like type stuff. That's not a full range of emotion. That's an extreme of emotions, okay? So for example, uh, let's use narcissism, okay? Typically narcissists, they do not feel guilty in hurting other people's feelings, but they might experience shame if this is made public, if they're exposed, they're very af afraid of being publicly shamed like what other people think. But in an interpersonal dynamic, if they hurt your feelings, they don't give a beep, okay? They really don't. And this is what I'm saying. With a healthy person, there's a full range of emotion. Not only am I concerned about what other people think and feel, but I'm concerned about what you think and feel. Not that I let this control me to the point where I'm suppressing who I am at my core, right? That would be codependency. The point is, is that you, you have somebody who's able to feel all these things, not just certain emotions that they amp up and then other things that they completely suppress or just don't even seem to feel. Another good indicator that you're experiencing intensity, not intimacy, is drama. Be aware of that, okay? I'm going to confess to you, you know, I was in a relationship before I got married where I was trying to, like, get closer and talk and open up and share my feelings and my thoughts, and I was trying to solve problems, which this person was very insecure and took it as, I don't accept them as they are, and I'm just trying to fix them, which is something that codependents do and empaths. We deeply want to heal people. We really do. But this person took offense to my efforts and would just totally shut down and stonewall me. So when I got into my next relationship with a drama king, <laughs> I didn't like it. And I knew something was off, but I reasoned within my head, well, you know, at least he's communicating to me because with the last guy, um... I was just getting stonewall. I can't I can't work with that. You know, I can't work with somebody who's not communicating. I mean, I would and and honestly, again, probably because of my background um which I talk more about in my book, okay? For those of you who are interested, but because of my background, I would have rather been cussed out 
then ignored. And so, you know, after going through that experience where I felt like I was being ignored by somebody who was stonewalling me, it made me more able, I guess, to put up with somebody who was being a drama king. And I put that in a positive context while he's expressing his feelings and his emotions. And that's better than somebody who's locked up. No, these are two extremes that you don't want any part of. It's, it's not healthy. What's healthy is somebody not shutting down on you. They're opening up, but then they're not dramatizing the whole event. They're, they're being taking a moderate middle ground approach in expressing their emotions in a level-headed way. In these intense, dramatic relationships, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of push and pull, hot, cold, high and low dynamics, this contrast going on. And people who are very much about the intensity of the moment, they're, they're in the here and now, okay? It's about living in the moment. And to the contrary, intimacy is about focusing on longevity of the relationship, Intensity is not about getting to know and accept who each person is. Uh, intimacy, though, is going to find a way to find that um, connection and maintain it and support it, even in times of conflict. Right? Intensity is just going to cut out of there um, or just burn, burn it down, you know? Uh, whereas an intimate connection, even in times of, of conflict, will seek and maintain connection but you get these relationships where there's a lot of hide and seek going on um, where basically people are hiding things from one another and there's it might be a defense mechanism like I'm afraid to let you know because then you're not going to you might go off on me or you might use this information against me which is kind of codependency fears you know or on the other hand you get this other like a person who's overtaking um, could be a narcissist, somebody emotionally unavailable. Um, this person is not really letting you in. They're hiding information so they can leverage things to their agenda, their hidden agenda. They don't want you to know what their real agenda is because then you they couldn't manipulate you anymore. <laughs> so, again, this is devoid of intimacy. When you have these relationships where there's hiding going on, and these runner-chaser dynamics and victim-victimizer dynamics um, where there's blaming going on and then you're trying to prove yourself that you're not guilty and then prove that you're, you're worth putting the work into and the effort. And a lot of times in these, these relationships, these high-intensity relationships, people feel a lot of fear and then yet strangely arousal, fear and arousal, fear and arousal like... Why am I turned on by this person, but then I'm afraid like they really don't like me or they're just going to leave me or what are they hiding from me? And then you just start having trouble expressing yourself, maybe even purposefully sensory and, and suppressing yourself so that you don't trigger this person because maybe there have been threats of betrayal or definite legitimate reasons to have a fear of abandonment. And the problem is, if you're in a relationship with a, a very intense person, you're never going to get to know them because they don't have any depth of emotional experience to share with you in the first place. They have a deficit of it. They are emotionally deficient uh, people, especially if you're dealing with a narcissist, a psychopath, a sociopath, somebody who's bipolar, okay? They don't feel pain also. Very important to know. These people do not feel pain as other people do. They might have a very high threshold of pain because they're so, they have in their lives become such masters at holding it down, holding, suppressing it, not feeling it. And, you know, you could try to come to them and say, you know, this is really hurting me. And then they'll turn the tables on you about why are you making a problem here? Um, kind of like in the example I gave earlier, um, 
me trying to solve the problem was perceived as you don't accept me for who I am. You will never be happy, right? This is coming from a place of insecurity where they're so much into you proving that, no, I do love you. I do accept you. I just want to solve this problem that they never make any time to solve your problem, which is, hey, we, I'm not getting what I need out of this relationship, okay? Um, by the way, if you're dealing with a narc, um, it's always going to be about them. Anytime you try to bring your problems to them, they're going to turn it back around about how you're bringing them problems and you need to solve it. And uh, they'll make sure, as long as you're involved with a narcissist, they will make absolute sure that it's never, never about you and your problems you're, never get solved. Your needs and wants never get met. Um, so be aware of that. Um, and this person could repeatedly humiliate you. Um, I, I went through that in a marriage and... Um, it's almost like this person, like I would come to them like, why, why are you, excuse my French, shitting on me? I said to this person, why are you shitting on me? Because they disregarded me, they disrespected through their neglect, their lack of honor, and they never seemed to understand the damage that was being done to my soul, to my spirit, to my relationships. I lost respect among family and friends, people disassociated with me. Because they thought, wow, what is your problem that you would be involved with somebody like this and let them take advantage of you? Let them just sacrifice you repeatedly, repeatedly. Um, you know, they lost respect for me because I allowed this person to repeatedly uh, disrespect me. And so, um, you know, to this day, I've not, I, I get, I've gotten apologies, but no changed behavior because I don't think this person ever really has. Um, been able to relate to the level of pain that an empath uh, can can definitely experience. And so unfortunately, uh, these relationships, uh, they're going to, to bring these dynamics where you lose your, your reputation, you lose your self-respect, you lose support, uh, because they're not empowering you, they're disempowering you. And the way they see your pain and other people's pain is almost through a clinical observatory lens. They don't seem to be bothered by it or upset by it, and they so they don't share in your pain. They don't seem to relate to your pain or have any desire. It can, again, it's going back to the contrast with an emotionally um, intimate relationship where somebody gets you because they want to. They want to hear you. They want to understand you. Uh, they want to relate to you. It's not necessarily they have to agree with you, but there is a desire to understand you. Whereas the narcissist, um, they don't have a desire. So how would they ever even go so far as to be able to share in your experience of pain? And then even further to help bring healing to that situation. It, that's just far reaching uh, prospect to even put out on the table. So here's the trouble is that codependents get very confused by the their partner's emotional incongruence. Um, basically what they're saying, what they're doing is not lining up. And you might experience somebody who's like a drama king or queen, okay? Um, where it seems like they, they are in touch with their emotions, but things are not lining up. And maybe the mystery of this person for a time really intrigues you, and that keeps you in the relationship longer. And, and that's where we get into trauma bonding, which I want to talk about now. You know, trauma bonding versus uh, healthy emotional bonding, where... Unfortunately, a lot of times when codependents and empaths realize that there's a problem here, a big problem that needs to be solved, they're in too deep. They might have children involved, okay? Um, and the trouble is codependents and empaths are forever, ever trying <laughs> to press through these problems and work through them harder and harder and harder uh, dealing with the intensity of this person to get to the intimacy. Um, and it, it's almost like they're trying to hold on to the relationship, like keep it, you know, hold on to it and keep it like it's a toy. Um, 
even though they're not getting what they want and need. And this is totally stressing them out emotionally because they repeatedly keep getting emotionally violated through these destructive individuals who are bringing major life changes, okay? Ruining credits, m ruining relationships with family and friends who don't even want to associate with this drama anymore, you know, that kind of thing. And so if you're caught up in this kind of dynamic, I want you to ask yourself, what's keeping you dwelling on the X? Is it love? Okay, let's go back to the teal swan definition I gave you. Real love is taking another person's best interests as your own. Well, if we entertain the idea that that is in fact love and this person is not taking your best interests as their own, then there's not love there, okay? So if love is not there, and it's, then it's not keeping you together, what is keeping you together? I believe what's keeping you together is relationship addiction. Um, I'm going to end the video on this note. We'll pick it up um, in the next segment that I'll put out tomorrow where we um, finish talking about relationship addiction and we talk about the solution to all of this, which is building relationships where there's intimacy, not intensity. I hope you'll join me for that next video. Thanks for watching. Be blessed.